Hi, I'm Mike Santolo, Chief Analyst of Cabot Growth Investor and Cabot Top 10 Trader, and I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review. So over the past couple of weeks, we've had some downs and ups, more downs and ups, obviously, and I'm, I'm recording this Friday morning, April 29th, last day of the month here, uh, trading-wise. Um, more downs and ups, and not much has changed, really, when you look at the overall evidence. I still see quite a few secondary signs, as I call them, meaning new low divergences, which we're going to look at in a second, and, you know, sentiment, and not just surveys now. We're starting to see money kind of pour out of equity funds and stuff like that. Things that tell you that, you know, the environment is ripe, I know this is kind of controversial, for a rally, at least a bounce, if not a sustained rally, so on and so forth. So we do have these secondary indicators out there, but I read someone online, they said, you know, these secondary indicators, sentiment and all that, it's like having dry tinder. You still need to light a match and set it on fire, and there's been no spark yet. Obviously, the trends are still down in the major indexes and the vast majority of stocks, something like, I think, 85% of NASDAQ stocks are below their 200-day lines. Um, and there are some pockets of strength here and there that pop up, whether it's obviously commodities have been strong, but even in growth stocks, there's some special situations here or you know, some reopening 3.0 stocks, some travel stocks, things like that. But for the most part, the trends are down and nothing has really sparked any sort of buying except for a few hours here or there, maybe a day. Um, and until that changes, I think you just have to stay patient, stay defensive. If you want to do a little buying, that's okay, assuming you have a lot of cash. But again, small positions on pullback, so on and so forth. It's the same general game plan we've had now for months. And it's the same general game plan we're going to have until the bulls finally step up, okay? But for right now, I still think it's mainly patience, you know, more on the sideline than in the market sort of thing. And then just wait and keep your eyes open and be open to the fact that things can change, but wait for them to actually change before taking action. Okay, let's hop into the charts. And um, I'm actually going to start with stockcharts.com. Now, let's see if I can do this. Uh, ba boom. Okay, I wanted to start with this. Hopefully, you can see that. Let's go over here. So, this is just, I just wanted to show you because, you know, it's one thing to write about. I'm not big on writing a ton of numbers because it's hard to read, you know. But saying, oh, the new lows are diverging and all this. Well, I mean, this is just one way to see it. This is the new, down here on the bottom, it's not the best chart, but it's a closing basis on the New York composite. And this histogram on the top is the number of stocks on the NYSE hitting new lows. Uh, excuse me, this one's the NASDAQ. So this is the NASDAQ I started with. And you can see back in January down here, the scale um, into that late January low, there was like 1,700 new lows. And then when we had the retest um, and reversal on the initial invasion, I guess it was 1,350 or something. And you can just see they've been sort of drying up. And even on this latest dip, as we're hitting almost, you know, whatever it is, yearly lows in the NASDAQ, the number of stocks hitting new lows on that exchange is, quote unquote, only, you know, 850, which is still a ton. Don't get me wrong, but it's about half as much as was seen in January. Does that guarantee anything? Like I said, no, but it is something that you do usually see. Uh, as the market bottoms out, which is, you know, just like at a top, fewer stocks participate, it gets a little thinner. You know, we talk about, we use that word thinner, and then we drop. Same thing on the downside, bottoms tend to be a process, not an event. So, you know, that's a positive, and it's less pronounced, but similar on the New York Stock Exchange, which admittedly is a more reliable measure of new lows. The NASDAQ has a lot of garbage on it. Not that the New York doesn't, but the NASDAQ has even more. And it's the same sort of thing. You had 900 or so, or I guess it was about 800 or so, both in January and February. But since then, in March and now April, you're starting to see fewer stocks participate. Doesn't mean we can't come in next week. I always say this. We could come in next Monday and we're down 5% and new lows explode to new highs. But so far, every day that goes by that we're kind of retesting these lows and there's fewer stocks doing the same thing, it's a small positive, okay? But now back to the go back to the you know market smith chart here and i'm i'll give that a plug here as usual we're using a product called market smith it's from investors Dis business daily you can learn more at marketsmith.com and this is your primary evidence so secondary evidence sentiment breath divergences new lows stuff like that most of that is positive um or at least encouraging i guess i would say but when it comes to you know the primary evidence i mean here's your 25 and 50 day moving averages this is the nasdaq composite and you're going to see as of today, we're down big to today's Amazon's getting nailed on earnings and that sort of thing. Uh, Apple's not doing too well. So we're kind of retesting these lows, um, but we're way below moving averages. And we just simply need to see some buyers show up. I mean, it's really no more complicated than that. Uh, you can talk about interest rates and the Fed and the dollar and earnings reports all you want. But how about some up action in the major indexes, okay? Um, the NASDAQ is one of the weaker ones, but everything is pretty much in the same boat. This is the S&P 500. You can just see 
you know, well below all its moving averages. The S&P mid cap, so some of the broader ones, actually this one doesn't update. So today, you know, MDY is down here, you know, below its moving averages, Russell 2000, same sort of thing. Uh, and then the New York Composite, which was part of the chart we were looking at, a little bit more kind of wild and wooly here, but again, just, you know, clearly broken down and nowhere to, nowhere to be found. Um, you know, a good couple of days, just to go back to the NASDAQ, just so people don't, you know, kind of right. Because at this point, I think we're in the cycle where it's like five months in, and you're just like the hell with it. Because, you know, so, so much of the news is bad, the action's bad. There's way more potholes out there or air pockets than there are surprises to the upside. There's a few on the upside, but, you know, there's way more bad than good. Um, but, you know, I would just say this, you know, we'll see where we close today. Maybe, maybe we just have to have another leg down here. But I would say a couple of good days really would do wonders. I'm not saying it would be a green light, but just to kind of when you're this sort of stretched to the downside, when there's this much bad news, when there's this much bad sentiment, when money has been coming out of funds, you know, sometimes a couple of good get days can really uh, just put a little bit of a short term floor in. You kind of work from there. But again, you kind of have to see it to believe it first. So right now, obviously, the trends are down. Same thing with whoops the uh, growth indexes that I like to follow. Obviously, NASDAQ is one, but this is QQQJ. Um, these are pretty similar. Some are a little weaker. I'd still say growth stocks are weaker than the average index for the most part, although it's kind of evening out. More and more stuff is sort of joining the, um, not the party, but joining the, uh, the prison run here. Um, but you can see well below the moving averages here near its lows. Um, IWO is a Russell 2000 growth. Uh, you can see this did slip to new lows here. Um, and is sort of holding down there, still extended to the downside. The IBD 50 fund, this one's a little bit, you know, can, can be a little bit growthy or not, but obviously clearly in a downtrend. And then the IPO fund, ARC had got killed this week from uh, Teladoc. That was another blow up. Uh, but either way, no matter what you're looking at, some are a little weaker, some are a little bit better, but just, you know, well below here. Okay, Mike, stop telling me all this bad stuff. What about something decent? Well, one thing I am noticing, and I would just say in general, first and foremost, I still think defensive stocks are obviously acting much better than the market. However, I would say that, so number one, XLP, I think, looks fine. And I think uh, I can't look at this last few days and say it's some major character change. But it is down a little bit, even as the market is kind of, I don't want to say steadied itself, but stopped going down for a couple of days. So I'm kind of watching that. And then also kind of in concert with that, you know, it's, I have noticed like this is the utilities, which even though rates were going up, I think was getting a bid here because of its defensiveness. And I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. And now you're kind of getting this straight down move to the 50 day line. Enough to say that it's um, topped out and defensive stocks are getting sold. Not yet, but again, it's just kind of a little bit of a breadcrumb. And then XLV, which is mostly kind of big pharma, not really biotech or anything, but just sort of big, stable, cheap, dividend paying pharma, you know, stable. Um, this was obviously outperforming and ha has been, you can see the relative performance line here, has been outperforming. But it is getting a, a little bit of weakness here. I think AbbVie got hit or something. But e either way, I am starting to see a little bit of the weakness in defensive stocks in and of itself. It's kind of like a secondary indicator, right? It doesn't mean much in and of itself. But like I said, it could be a little bit of a breadcrumb. I will be watching that to see if we do rally in the NASDAQ and say XLP joins some of these things on the downside, that would be a little bit of a change in character. But so a little bit there to watch. I'd say a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say hope, but a little bit of hope there. Um, but um, something, something to keep an eye on. Okay, diving into individual stocks. So most of them are sort of in the energy and commodity plays. Now these have, some of them have gotten hit and I'll get into those. And those might be more for people who, you know, don't own any and they want to nibble and put a tight stop in there because a lot of them have come right down to the 50 day lines. But one area of the market that's still very strong is natural gas. Now this is Antero Resources, which is probably the number one natural gas name out there, I think. Um, now, you know, first of all, well, okay. First, first of all, just so it give you perspective. So this is the monthly chart. You can kind of see Antero was basically almost bankrupt, number one. So it has had a big run here, number one. So you're not in the first inning, but you're also in the big, big, big picture. I wouldn't say it's over. Um, I like this, you know, the move the last few weeks here. And then we had a little bit of a shakeout on um, last week. You know, they, they hit everything, but earnings have sort of brought in a lot of buyers yesterday. I don't think it's really viable here, although make your own decision. But just keep an eye on it. You know, maybe we the market pulls it back in. Maybe it does touch the 50-day down the line. But natural gas stocks are still pretty strong. Some others that aren't, I would say Intero looks the best. But you are getting some of these. So this is Chesapeake, CHK. 
Um, not as powerful. You can see the breakout. It's not up that much from the breakout, but in this market, up up anything is pretty good. And it's kind of hanging around the 50-day line. I'm not recommending anything. You could just watch it, wait for a bounce, buy some here with a tight stop, whatever you want to do. But this is kind of the first test of the 50-day line. And a similar picture, although actually a little bit better than that, for uh, range resources, which is RRC. Again, it's not as strong as Intero. You can kind of see from the, you know, whatever, the breakout level, it's up, but not huge. Um, but either way, it's kind of its first test of the 50-day line, 10-week line. Decide what you want to do with it. But I do think some of the natural gas stocks and prices, not only prices now, oil prices now are 100, but if you look out a year in the futures market there, I don't have the quote in front of me, but it's like 90 or 85. Natural gas prices are up here now and sort of very high for the next year. So a lot of these things are probably banging out pretty high priced hedges, maybe we'll see. I'm um, going to be making a lot of money here going forward. So anyway, that that's one area. More on the traditional energy and commodities. Um, whoops, PDC Energy. I mentioned a couple of these uh, two weeks ago when I was on the video. You're kind of getting the first, you know, again breakout, choppy, you know, but advance. And now you're kind of getting that first test of the 50-day line. In a weak market, you know, the first test of the 50-day line is not always going to work, obviously. So it's sort of a risk reward thing. But again, you know. Do you want to put in a tight stop somewhere or a nibble or, you know, whatever you want to do? I'm just I'm just mentioning I'm seeing a lot of these patterns. Devon Energy, we have this rated hold. And a lot of these, by the way, they do have earnings next week. So, you know, dividend announcements and, and uh, earnings and outlook. So that's a risk, too. But again, you're kind of getting I wouldn't say this is more the third pullback, which is a little bit more mature, but it has bounced back nicely. So kind of see what happens on earnings. Um, Nutrien, which is one of the fertilizer names, again, you know, very sharp decline usually when you see this sort of big move when you get this sort of thing for not just a few days but a, you know many weeks and then it's whoosh you know unless it's if it's very early in like a bull market like sometimes that can just be a, a quick shakeout but if if it then kind of just rallies a little bit like this has and it's reversing my guess is there'll be further reverberations is what i'm trying to say uh, how that plays out whether it's just a top and everything gets hit or just another shakeout and then it comes back but Either way, first pull back to the 50-day line. I think it's kind of worth watching, and let's just see how it kind of reacts going forward. And then I did want to mention Arch Resources, which is coal. I mean, now we're really going into the energy. <laughs> you know, we're in sort of the, the players of the players. But um, Arch just came out with earnings. So this is kind of interesting. They have, you know, an $8 dividend this quarter, and they're going to end up buying back a ton of stock and so on and so forth. You can go read about it. Um, but you did get one of these. This is what you're sort of looking for is – um, you know, consolidation here, kind of tried to get going and then got hit with the market last week. But of course, as soon as earnings came out, I mean, look at the volume signature on this. It's all over the place here from 170 to 130, back to 175, you know, sort of thing. Now it's 165. Uh, but maybe if this can settle down and some of the other coal stocks look pretty good too, uh, Arch is one to keep an eye on ARCH. And obviously earnings are out of the way. Um, so I still think there's some op there could be some opportunities in commodity land. That said, there's no question the selling is, is spreading. It's not just, you know, ARC now. It's more and more commodities and some of the um, agricultural and stuff like that. Shipping stocks got hit a few weeks ago. So just realize it's a, it's a little bit, I would say, thinner ice uh, for there. And, of course, these stocks have had huge moves. They could easily consolidate for a while and resume their advances down the road. Uh, but right here, some of them could be setting up at least a chance at, a trade, if not something, you know, the first test of the 50-day line. Um, moving on to growth stocks, what can I say? It's pretty thin out there. Like I said, 85% of NASDAQ stocks are below the 200-day line, including this one. But, um, we're, you know, I'm trying to find stocks that um, if they're near their high, that's great. But most of the ones that were near their high have gotten hit. So this is CrowdStrike, CRWD. This is a reset base. It's a 50% correction. Uh, but here's your January low, uh, February, another February. I guess that was early March. And now, obviously, on this retest, we're up at 200 bucks. So clearly, um, it's trying to resist. It doesn't really want to participate in the decline as much. And notice how volume on this decline, really since Easter, has been very, very light. So, you know, it's all cold comfort at this point. You're not making a lot of money on the stock or anything. Um, but again, you're kind of down to the 50-day line here. Let's see if this kind of sets up. Maybe this is the beginning of sort of a multi-week structure that it eventually launches from. Um, but CrowdStrike's kind of on my... Uh, back burner watch list. Um, Lanthius, I wanted to mention, this is LNTH. Uh, this is the one that had a 10 times uh, earnings breakout, 10 times volume earnings breakout back in February. Had a nice advance, choppy, uh, but just reported earnings last night. So this is, I'm recording this Friday. We'll see where it closes, but up pretty good today. You know, buying strength in this environment, not usually a good thing, but 
um, you know, certainly acting well, and maybe as this 50-day line catches up here in the next couple weeks, maybe there's an opportunity there. And I still like the look of Halo. It has started to pull back Halozyme, H-A-L-O. Again, there's a lot of overhead here. If you look at the weekly chart, um, it kind of had this, it really wasn't that deep. I think it was like 37% or something, if I'm remembering correctly. But it bottomed out for a while, and now it's kind of coming up. It, you know, not a great week, but this comes after a few good weeks in a row. So let's just keep an eye on it. I'm not really expecting anything to run away on the upside, but so far this pullback, um, sharp, a little bit of volume down here, but I wouldn't say it's anything abnormal at all, given what's gone on. And then just back on, the, in terms of growth stocks, looking at higher lows, I'm still trying to find, you just kind of keep these in mind. You, know, you come in next week and boom, but so far bill.com, it had a huge correction, I forget, 60%. And whenever something falls 50, 60 percent, very, 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 very often, it's just going to take time. It's like falling off a motorcycle. You broke a few bones. You're going to have to be in the hospital for a while. And so Bill's been trying to, you know, form higher lows here or at least not lower lows. You can see during the last few months and now it's put in whatever, three months of here of bottom building action. Like the market, it's kind of meaningless. But if you do get a couple of good days here, all of a sudden it's like, oh, OK, maybe we got a little bottom formation to this huge structure. So build.com's one, again, kind of back burner, just keeping an eye on. MongoDB, uh, which honestly, this one had such, they, these things have all had such huge runs, so they're going to need time. And you're going to see how big the run was before the decline. Um, but again, you kind of notice how you have this low, you got some volume clues on the weekly chart at the low, and it's gotten hit here during the last, you know, it's gone from 480, 470, I guess, to whatever this is, 350. So, you know, it's it's moving around a lot, but it's it's a hell of a lot higher than it was at 270 at the low. Okay, in fact, it kind of has this little head and shoulders look to it. But whatever the case may be, just kind of flagging it for this much higher low here over the last few months. Um, Zoom Info, I think I might have mentioned this. I still keep an eye on this, just a distant eye, just because um, actually this and the last stock I'm going to mention. These big IPO bases do have a history, especially when you're coming out of a kind of a bear phase for growth stocks, obviously. When we do come out of this, these big IPO bases do have a history of sort of launching some winners. So I like to keep an eye on them. And, you know, sometimes the bases can be three months, but a lot of times you get sort of the Alibaba or the Baidu had one that was like, you know, a year or two years. Facebook was nine months sort of thing. Um, and you just noticed again with the, I guess it's easier to see on the daily chart. You know, here was your January low at 42, 46. You know, does it look great? No. Uh, but again, a couple of good days. Maybe it gets back above the 50-day line. Not saying it's buyable. But all of a sudden, if if you can get some of these things to kind of start rounding out, you might have something to work with at least. Um, you know, we'll see how it goes. And last but not least, I'll mention this one again. I, I, I kind of keep putting this one on the watch list, crossing it off. They have earnings next week. This is Airbnb, ABNB. Same kind of thing I was saying with Zoom Info. You know, they have a $102 billion market cap. And in this environment, that could be poison. So who knows? Maybe they report earnings next week, and this is the next big dud like Teladoc or Align or Netflix or whatever. Um, but so far, I have to say, I mean, it certainly had every reason to fall apart. And again, you kind of have these pretty solid support, it looks like pretty solid support in here. In the 130, 140 area, a lot of other travel stocks are looking good. Airlines, which I'll mention here in a second, um, some of the um, hotels and stuff like that. So let's just see what they say. Let's see what their outlook is. Um, if you get a gap, again, I'm not going to say it's anything viable on a gap, but in this environment, but I am kind of keeping an eye on Airbnb. I actually put it back on my watch list yesterday just because um, I've always liked the story. And they've, they've actually recovered from the pandemic uh, quicker than a lot of other things. Um, but the stock just, you know, it's still waterlogged. OK. And last but not least, I'll just mention this. This is um, UAL, but a few airlines look good. Um, they're all saying they've come out and said first quarter was OK. Second quarter is going to be profitable, not, you know, back to profits for the first time in forever since the pandemic and just huge earnings from there. And the way these things usually go, not always because fuel prices can affect things, but usually when the tide turns, it doesn't turn for one or two quarters, and it's usually a much bigger turn than people expect. So it's nothing great, but you had this huge shakeout. This is UAL. You had this huge shakeout here on the, I think that was on the Russia invasion and the you know spiking energy prices. But that looks like that was the puke low, and now it's working its way back. Obviously has work to do. It's not going to, you know, triple overnight, but you are seeing some a little bit of a group move in some of the airlines and some of the hotel operators. OK, so anyway, there's not much going on right now. I think right now is a time for patience. The one thing I would say, though, is if if things do turn around, whether it's now or a month from now, it doesn't within a week, you know, all of a sudden it's like, hey, there's no setups out there. What There's nothing to buy. Don't worry about it. All of a sudden, within a few days, if things really kick into gear, 
you're going to start to, especially now that we've gone through many months of sort of bottom building, trying to bottom build anyway, and declines in the NASDAQ and all that. As we get a few good days under us, you'll be surprised at how many setups can appear pretty quickly, okay? But again, I keep saying this, you kind of have to see it. You have to wait for the whites of the eyes. You kind of have to see it before doing anything. And just following that simple principle, it, you know, except for some small nibbles here and there, can keep you out of a lot of trouble. So for right now, I think it's about playing defense, being cautious, but also keeping your eyes open and being open to the possibility that, hey, maybe the bulls, maybe something goes right in the world and the bulls can actually take control here somewhat soon. Okay, that's all the time I have for today. Thanks for listening, and be sure to come by again next week for another Cabot Weekly Review.